have we adequately clarified the primary EDC insertion that extends the MP joint? Yes, it's the sagittal bands, which we already discussed. But let's take a closer look at the sagittal band, the fibers that go all around the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Think about the usual construct of a muscle tendon unit. The muscle contracts, the power is transmitted to the tendon, the tendon crosses a joint before it inserts, so when you pull on that tendon, the joint moves. Here we have a totally unique insertion of a muscle. That muscle power is being transmitted around a joint, not just across it, but around it. And this sagittal band lifts the proximal phalanx into extension. It lifts it while it's tethered to the volar plate, preventing that distal and proximal glide. There's distal and proximal glide dorsally as it pivots here, but there's no glide here. Here's a photograph of the sagittal band fibers. On your left is the metacarpal phalangeal joint and the, the distal aspect of the finger is on your right. The extensor digitorum communis comes across the metacarpal phalangeal and these fibers dive between the MP joints in order to insert on the volar plate. It's difficult to get a really good photograph of these fibers because you have to separate out the fingers on each side. It is difficult to get a really good photograph of these fibers because you have to remove the fingers on each side in order to see how the fibers dive down and around the joint. This cross-sectional perhaps shows it to us the best. As we look at this anatomy, we see that this is the extensor digitorum communis being held in place by the sagittal bands. And here is the volar plate that is also the back of the flexor tendon pulley with the flexor tendons inside. Here is the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Collateral ligaments are here and here. And we see the condyles of the bones and we see how the sagittal band totally encapsulates these structures. Therefore, the sagittal band continuity is an important in providing stability to the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Here we see with the finger inflection, even though there are interconnections, that this as well as all of the MP joints, the EDC is held centralized because of the sagittal band fibers. They don't slip off to the side unless there is some pathology present and those sagittal band fibers have become attenuated. This lateral photograph is the best image I've been able to get of the sagittal band fibers. You can see them clearly here as separate from the transverse fibers. I've outlined them so that you can see more clearly exactly what I'm referring to. In flexion, these have shown us that they are separate. But you can imagine that when you take this finger and put this joint into extension, that the transverse fibers will move proximally and therefore they will overlap the sagittal band fibers when the finger is in extension. This also is a clear illustration of the transverse fibers being distal to the MP joint. I included this photograph because here we see the sagittal band fibers at the MP joint being essentially the only location in this photograph where the tendon is clearly tethered down or if you will attached. In the remainder of the photograph it looks very um, superficial and, and not at all attached. This also is a very useful illustration in the ring finger showing what appears to be the redundancy of length. In other words, it appears essentially too long.
One of the roles of the extensor digitorum communis in assisting with finger motion is to take up this slack. Here we have an extrinsic muscle that has significant excursion, and so it creates tension in the dorsal apparatus. With tension in the dorsal apparatus, a very small amount of muscle contraction from any of the smaller intrinsic muscles can be more effective. Otherwise, they would have to take up the slack and still have excursion available in order to affect movement. So it's really a concert between the extensor digitorum communis and the intrinsic muscles to create finger extension. What is also not really obvious in this slide, but that one can observe is this tension can be created actively in extension if you imagine this pulling proximally taking the slack up here or if we flex the metacarpal phalangeal joint the flexion alone creates tension which is instead of the active contraction. So the sagittal bands arise from the volar plate encircle the metacarpal phalangeal joint and return to the volar plate and insert. In this schematic drawing, we've now turned these anatomical structures into lines. This represents the extensor digitorum communis, and this is the sagittal bands, and here's the volar plate. And we've done this to illustrate how the sagittal band fibers highlighted here move during flexion and extension. If during extension there's tension directed here, the tension that is directed to the central slip insertion must first cross the, the MP joint and must first and will always affect motion at the MP joint and only then will it continue distally. Therefore, in the normal active finger, the extensor digitorum communis can never be the primary extensor of the PIP and DIP joints. In the normal finger, it would always be secondary. It can be primary if the MP joint motion is blocked. Here we see a schematic drawing of the metacarpal phalangeal joint in extension as well as the MP joint in flexion. The yellow represents the volar plate and how it remains stationary and in extension the sagittal band fibers move proximally and in flexion they move distally. But they, are, they remain attached to the volar plate and therefore they pivot. This excursion dis, uh, dorsally, distally and proximally is what creates MP joint extension. However, with a proximal pull, one can pull the MP joint into hyperextension and there will be a limit or a stop created by the inability of the sagittal band fibers to go any further proximally. In hyperextension, this will block further proximal excursion. And because these fibers are proximal and tethering the EDC, there's no power left to extend the PIP. So it's almost impossible to hold the metacarpal phalangeal joint in hyperextension and fully extend the PIP joint. Here we're looking down on the dorsum of the hand. The extensor digitorum communis tendons have been incised and lifted up. So we're looking down into the metacarpal phalangeal joint capsules and you see that we see the sagittal bands as they're diving down and around and we see clearly that this system is not free with proximal and distal excursion but it's limited by the sagittal band insertions. Another view, another cross section that shows the sagittal band in place. Here we see that sagittal band is going around the joint. This is a bit more proximal, not fully at the joint, but we see the interosseous muscles between the spaces of the hand. 
and here we see the lumbrical as well as the flexor tendon muscles. All of these are moving distally to approach the, and cross the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Looking at this specimen, we see the limitation that the sagittal band creates in lifting the uh, tendons on the ulnar aspect of the hand. The single most important concept, I believe, is the fact that the sagittal band fibers limit excursion of the EDC and that when there's tension on the EDC, it will first and always extend the MP joint before it does anything else within the finger. This is an image of a, a patient who has rheumatoid arthritis and we're seeing synovitis at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. As this synovitis enlarges the joint capsule, you can see that it is eroding through the sagittal band fibers. It's both making the fibers longer as they are attenuated by the tension, and it's also literally breaking through and will create mechanical instability. The extensor digitorum communis then, as we know, shifts ulnarly very readily following uh, a synovitis presentation such as this. But think back to that illustration where the sagittal band fiber goes all the way around the MP joint. Think of the stability it provides. Now imagine this circumstance where, in essence, that is blown out. Any rheumatoid finger with this presentation will now have decreased stability of the joint. And with ulnar deviation of the extensor tendon, you will also see that there's a subluxation of the proximal phalanx on the metacarpal. And that's because the entire support structure, the sagittal band, has now become too large to be mechanically effective. 